Hello, all you amazing and creative people. Welcome to the Daz3D YouTube channel. This is the final episode in our mini tutorial series all about making cinematic cutscenes in Unity using Daz3D assets. I hope you've been enjoying it if you've been following along. Today, we are just going to fine tune a few things, put on the final polish, and then I'm going to show you how to record your real-time rendering in Unity so that way you can uh, save it out as a video file and use it however you wish. So let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so just real quick, the first thing I want to do is to expand my desert a little bit. I'm raising up some of the dunes and checking how it looks in the camera uh, just to make it look a little more dramatic. Okay, the next thing we need to do is go to Window package manager then we're going to search for uh, your assets and you're going to want to grab the standard assets from unity if you haven't grabbed this already you can go to the store while you're logged into your account uh, it is free so you're just going to need to add it to your assets so that way you can download it from the package manager go ahead and import it we're going to import everything for now no point stressing trying to go through it there is a lot of stuff and we're not going to use everything in the standard assets pack but feel free to look through it and maybe you'll see stuff that interests you as you continue in your own project the only thing we're really interested in right now is the dust storm particle effect that you can see playing in my intro once you've got the standard assets imported we can come over to the asset folder then find that standard assets folder look for particle systems prefabs and then you'll see right here there is a dust storm go ahead and drop that in and as you can see that particle system is playing by default it's kind of a white color you can go through and look at the settings uh, to try to get a feel for how it looks so you see if I increase the rate over time in the emission it can make it look more stormy we can make it look less stormy we can change the color of it so there's a lot of cool things that you can do to try to get the look that you want. Ultimately, what I'm going to do is just kind of play with the tint of the dust so that it matches a little better. And I'm also going to bring it down a little lower to the ground. I don't want to look like a huge storm is going on, but I do want to convey that there is a little bit of wind kicking up some of the sand. An easy way to change the color is just to go to the color over lifetime and you'll see that there is this gradient here and so we could play with that. We could also use the eyedropper to just grab different colors directly from our sand to help the color match a lot better. For me, I'm not going to mess with the default settings too much, maybe besides the color and I might play with the positioning to make it look less stormy. Okay, and you might recall in one of the previous videos I talked about changing the position of the sun to get different lighting. Ultimately, as you probably noticed in my cinematic, I did decide to go with more of a dusk look. Uh, so I kind of changed the position of the sun to be just above the horizon. So I was getting some light, but we have a lot of nice soft shadows. As you've been following along, you may have been wondering why your project just doesn't quite pop or look the same as mine. And that's because I've been holding out on you. Finally, we are going to talk about post-processing. Look at these pillars and the beautiful shadows, soft light, all of that is post-processing effects. The way that post-processing works in Unity HDRP is a little different than in some of the other render pipelines. But don't worry, I'm going to teach you how to set it up so you can add your own effects to your cinematics to truly make them pop. Okay, so we're going to come back to the hierarchy, right click, go to Volume and Global Volume. And I'm going to name this Global Volume Post Processing. With this global volume selected, come over to the inspector, make sure that it is set as global, and then in the profile, we're going to have to click new. It's going to create the post processing profile. When you click add override and post processing, you're now going to see a long list of various effects that you can add to this global profile. Anything from vignette to bloom, 
and I will go over the ones that I use and why I think they are the most beneficial for your project. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is come to the sky and fog volume that should have already been included by HRP. If not, you can create it just like we created the post processing object. As you can see, these are the only color settings that I'm playing with. This is changing the look of the sky, the color of the sky on the horizon. Then for my sun, I will show you here. I haven't played with any of the defaults besides the position. If you want to try to mimic this lighting, uh, that is the exact position that I chose. Keep in mind, it could look a little differently for you, depending on the position of your objects and how they cast shadows. Another big one for color adjustments, just a little bit of saturation, I think goes a long way. And ambient occlusion, this is a big one. This will also depend on how powerful your hardware is, uh, whether or not you can match the settings that I've done. And then finally, bloom is what is going to give you that soft, beautiful glow to your light. I also like to add just a touch of film grain. It's very subtle, but I believe that with it turned on, it makes a huge difference. So that there, I just kind of showed you what it looked like with and without the post-processing. And I feel really good about that. If you need to pause and take a look, closer look at my settings, feel free to do so. One of the last things I want to do is address a problem I have with my character. There's some reflectivity issues, a lot of light that is gleaming off of certain aspects of the character. So as you can see, what I had to do is open up my character in the hierarchy, and you'll see that there's actually a game object for the various components of the character. So the shape, uh, we also have um, other aspects of their outfit. My main concern is the skin, which I, am able to handle by editing the uh, Genesis female shape. You'll see in the inspector there are um, different materials for the various parts of the body because of how they are done in DAS. It's not all on one material. So what you're gonna have to do if you have these reflectivity issues like I was experiencing is go into the skinned mesh renderer and as you can see, uh, for example, the torso is what I was editing right there. And you can open up the surface properties and go ahead and I would recommend just playing with the sliders like I was doing. Um, I noticed that some of the settings worked better for different parts of the body in my opinion. So uh, things to look out for are like the glossiness and things like that. We want to try to reduce some of the light refractions that's occurring. Like you can see those really strong glitters coming off of the hairband. There's some sparks on the face. So those are things that I'm looking to try to eliminate. I wish I could tell you one setting, but in my experience, it just doesn't solve every instance. And so feel free to just kind of check you know, turn up the metallic, turn it back down, look at roughness, uh, glossiness, any of these settings. As you play with them, you should be able to reduce the reflection and that light refraction that is occurring. So as you can see, some of the settings that worked on uh, the torso and the arms aren't quite cutting it for the material for the face. So I've been playing around with just a few different things, trying to see how it affects it, like the height map offset, giving the roughness of the skin, but still getting a lot of glares. Playing with the normal map weight has some effect on where the glares occur.
But hopefully it helps as I play with each of these values. It gives you an opportunity to see firsthand how it affects your character in HDRP. It also gives you an idea of what you might be able to do to try to correct any undesirable effects that you see. So at this point, I'm kind of just testing out the different settings, trying to get a feel for what is under my control so I can try to create the best outcome. You'll see all the way down at the bottom, this roughness is smooth checkbox. It also has a pretty a strong general impact. So the nice thing about that is the glares become a lot more natural. And I think that's probably what I'm going to settle on. I don't mind a little bit of glare on the skin. It's hot. We're in the desert. The character might even be a little sweaty. It makes sense that the skin is going to glare a little bit. So this is where I start to feel pretty good about uh, what I've done. So we've got roughness is smooth on, we've got the top coat roughness, and then I'm just playing with a little bit of the top coat settings to get a little bit of a glare, but at least now it isn't these uh, large speckles like I was dealing with. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that method and try to apply it to some of the other body parts to get a desirable look. At this point, I'm thinking it looks a little weird for the ears to have that much of reflection. So I'm just gonna kinda turn that down a little bit, try to get that reflection under control. And again, it seems like the roughness is smooth checkbox is probably the smart option for most of what you're dealing with. I know this part is taking a lot of time, but I felt like it'd probably be worthwhile to kind of let this slow down just a little bit because we've been moving pretty quick. And there's a lot of settings and a lot of things that you can do here when you're trying to perfect the look of your character. So I hope it's valuable to see my process and how I try to problem solve and try to achieve more desirable outcome. If you've been following along and using the same models as me, you might be running into this issue with the glittering on the band. So all you need to do is click on the base hair model and then you'll see the materials for the hair itself and for the band. Getting hair to look good in HDRP with these DAZ assets can be a little tricky as sometimes I feel like the defaults might not cut it. But this just depends on the color of hair, the type of hair, how many strands you have and other things like that. In a world where everybody wants an easy answer, trust me, I know I do too, unfortunately hair will vary greatly depending on the asset that you're using. So don't be afraid to just play around with the settings because I find that I'm usually pleased with different settings depending on the hair that I have to work with. And finally getting to the hairband material, I can eliminate what had been bothering me probably the most out of all of the reflections was that crown of glittering that she was wearing. Sadly, I can't remove 
the hairband. I don't really need it for this character, so I'm just going to make it uh, as less noticeable as possible. And I think it'll work for what I'm doing. I promise we are so close. We are almost there. Last thing to do is go back to the package manager and search for the Unity Recorder. This is how we're going to save your cinematic as a video file, which you can use anywhere outside of Unity. Go ahead and import it. And once you're ready, we will go back to our timeline asset. If you come back to the timeline, all you have to do now is add the new recorder track. I'm going to put it down here at the bottom. Just right click. We're going to add the recorder here. And then I'm just going to start it at the very beginning and stretch it all the way to the very end. What this is going to do is record anything that falls within these parameters. So if you put it from start to finish, your entire timeline is going to be exported as footage. You can use the menu on the right to put uh, any exporting settings that you want to use. You can also label various takes if you want to try certain variations, um, but still keep the raw footage. So you've got a lot of cool stuff to work with. When you're ready, all you need to do is hit play. If you have optimized your post-processing well enough that you don't get serious frame drops, you're not going to see any issues running this while the frame recorder is going. All right, after a few more just subtle adjustments, I think I am finally ready to show you the final cinematic. So here we go. Well, there you go. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it was a short cinematic, but hopefully you have learned a thing or two about Unity, using timeline, post-processing, uh, bringing in your DAZ assets, everything you need to know to create awesome cinematics. We would love to see what you create. We hope that you give it a try. And thank you so much if you stuck with us through all of these tutorials. It's been a lot of fun. Well, keep creating and have a great day. See ya.